Welcome to your Around the Peninsula. I'm Senior Airman Christiana Scott. A few commanders on Kunsan Air Base took time to partake in a first responders exercise. Staff Sergeant Christopher Kingen tells us more. Exercise, exercise, exercise. In support of Fire Prevention Week, the firefighters on Kunsan Air Base hosted a live simulated drill for some of the commanders. Well, today we're just kicking off the end of our uh, Fire Prevention Week, which is every October 7th through the 14th. Um, we're giving our upper echelon a chance to see what it's like in the day of firefighter, what we do, um, some of the things we do here on base, some of the services we provide, and let them get that uh, first-hand experience uh, of what it's like. And what do the commanders get out of this? A better appreciation of what the fire department does. You know, um, I've actually never been able to do this before, so it was kind of a neat opportunity to, to get to see what they do and appreciate the there's a lot that goes into it. You kind of think it's just simple, you know, putting a hose on a fire, but it's a lot more complicated than that. Hosting the commanders sheds light on how important the fire department really is. I understand we appreciate all that they do and know that they're an important part of this, this base. And, uh, you know, it's, it's one of those things you really hope they don't have to do their job for real. But I know if they, they ever did, you know, this was the best uh, small fire department in the Air Force last year. And it's, it's pretty obvious from the high caliber of people that I met today. The fire department also says having leadership come down was a privilege and a great morale booster for them. Air Force Staff Sergeant Christopher Kingen, Kunsan Air Base, Korea. Fire prevention ran from the 7th to the 14th of October. A private in the U.S. Army has earned her right to become a citizen. Specialist Jacob Blonick was there for a first-hand look at this special ceremony. Uh, well, actually, we Private Alicia Charles enlisted in the United States Army November 21, 2011. She joined during a time of war and without any of the liberties afforded an American citizen. Like, I really love my job. I love all the great people I met. Like, this is one of the, like, this is the best decision I've made in my life. I'm speechless right now. Charles had a guest at the ceremony that, to her, made the first day as an American citizen even more special. For me, it was with the general making it his personal time to come here just for one soldier, one PV2, just to come here and to congratulate me on my citizenship. That was like really special. U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services from Seoul was on hand to administer the oath. There's nothing that our, unit, that our government can bestow on any individual that would be of higher value than a U.S. citizenship. And I can think of no one more deserving than these soldiers, sailors, and Marines. Charles had a plan of action for celebrating her naturalization later that day. I'm probably going to um, have a little barbecue and celebrate this wonderful achievement in my family. Specialist Jacob Blonick, Camp Henry, Korea. Alicia's inspiration to become a U.S. citizen came from her father, who also gained a citizenship through military service and has been enlisted for over 20 years. The month of October has many awareness topics associated with it. Air Force Staff Sergeant Jennifer Stye explains how airmen at Osan Air Base are focusing on one topic in particular that has the interest of President Obama. According to Pike Research, the U.S. Department of Defense combines to form the single largest consumer of energy in the world. President Obama signed an executive order which requires a reduction in facility energy usage by 3 percent per year. So far, Osan has met our federally mandated goals every single year since 2003. But because of inflation and rising utility costs and the base is becoming bigger, you know, we're, we're building more infrastructure here. The bills are continuously going up every single year. So to continue meeting that goal, we need to make sure that people are more and more aware every single day. The Energy Management Office put together a 5K run to help raise awareness. It's the little thing, you know, you leave work, turn off the monitor, and actually, if everyone did that on base, you'd actually save astronomical figures, and you can use that for fuel consumption on the jets. This year, Osan spent $20 million for utilities, but by doing the little things to save energy, it can add up to big savings. Air Force Staff Sergeant Jennifer Stye, Osan Air Base, Korea. According to Pike Research, the Army, Navy, and Air Force have a target of 25 percent of all energy produced from renewable energy sources by year 2025. The crisp movements and coordinated spins of the Honor Guard and Color Guardsmen are not learned overnight. Specialist John Barry shows us the man responsible for the team's high standards. Ceremonial at 
Eight. The Honor Guard Company's Color Guard carries the colors of both the U.S. and Korean countries for parades and ceremonies. Army Sergeant Justin White is the man behind making sure the guard is dressed right dress and in perfect sync. This is my first opportunity to work with other MOSs of all ranks and train them up, you know, in one primary mission, being the, the ceremonies and then also our guard mission here. But I've done my, my best to just, you know, show them, uh, show them the way and uh, be the best leader I can be. Sergeant White uses his training from his past unit in the old guard to help select and train the best soldiers for the teams, bringing the high standards of the old guard to the tasks given. This is a unique skill set, so it's not for everybody. There's a uh, new man integration program. When I first got here, I was the NCO in charge of that, doing the instructor position to bring the soldiers here that, that want to be here, that are dedicated and motivated to, to learn something new and perfect that skill. Okay, take a look where you're I'm happy to be here. Korea's been a great time and I enjoy training the soldiers. Specialist John Barry, Yongsan, Korea. One, two, three, four. Sergeant White has been with the company for over a year. Running is a fact of life for members of the military. Specialist Tyler Ferris takes us to the Gangnam District of Seoul, where service members are using their running skills to build a stronger tie with the local community. All of the runners here have my great respect. You have not only made an important commitment to maintain a healthy lifestyle, but also have set a great example for others to follow. Thousands of American troops, civilians, and their families have participated in the Gangnam Marathon over the years, demonstrating our time-tested and time-honored alliance motto of Kachi Kapsida, we go together. Open Gangnam Style. Service members showed support for their host nation during the 10th annual International Peace Marathon. <laughs> Cheerleaders motivated the runners by leading them in an energetic dance. Oh, I'm just excited and uh, I didn't realize how big the race was actually going to be until I'm here now on the ground seeing all the tents up. Everybody's motivated. Adrenaline's pumping, so we're ready to go. This is Major Resendez's first time to run a half marathon, 13.1 miles. It's something that I never thought that I'd want to do or that, I'd, uh, that I could be able to do, but uh, after training, I know mentally that I'm, I'm ready for it, so uh, I'm going to do the best I can. Major Resendez proved she was ready for the race by finishing in two hours and six minutes and plans to improve her time at her next race in February. Specialist Tyler Ferris, Seoul, Korea. The race included 5K, 10K, half marathon, and full marathon events. Competing in an athletic event is a great way to meet new people. Army Sergeant Chris Garver has a story of how one soldier adjusted to her new unit during a battalion sports day at Camp Casey. More than 100 soldiers came out to Cary Field on Camp Casey for the 70th Brigade Support Battalion Sports Day and enjoyed some friendly competition. They don't know what they're doing. For one soldier who just arrived in Korea two weeks ago, this is the first chance she's had to meet everyone in the unit. Today especially, I've gotten to know my Sergeant Major, my Colonel, and it's, it has been a wonderful event because everybody's competitive, trying to win, so we have built a lot of unit cohesion today. <laughs> go, 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 go. Hudgens competed in events like flag football and tug of war. Others saw how the day brought the unit closer together. It's just a little friendly competition. You got everyone coming together, uh, trying to win different events. So that'll bring, I guess, um, build that morale, camaraderie. Working long days, Hudgens was ready for a chance to kick back. It's important to have events like this because it allows you to just relax, enjoy each other without, you know, any pressure or any rules. Through the 70th BSB Sports Day, Sergeant Hudgens met a lot of new people in her unit and made some new friends. Hey! Army Sergeant Chris Garver, Camp Casey, Korea. This is an annual event for the 70th BSB Soldiers. That was your Around the Peninsula for Thursday, October 18th. From all of us at AFN, enjoy your evening. <laughs>